And for more on this, we are joined in studio by Emily Schrader, a correspondent with Ynet News. Thank you so much, Emily, for being with us. This is not the first time the Israeli government has looked at shutting down Al Jazeera operations. What makes this time different? Well, I think that the evidence that the IDF is finding on the ground, and by the way, not just in this Al Jazeera incident, but also before, if you remember, a few weeks ago, it was revealed that there were several UNRWA teachers who took part in the massacre. In addition to that, there were journalists who were employed by, I think they were freelancers for BBC, for New York Times, for several others as photographers who conveniently were at the scene of the massacre, even crossing into Israel illegally with the terrorists, and then we're supposed to believe that they were just there under journalistic uh, motivations. Well, we're not buying it anymore. Uh, and we see similar things with Al Jazeera now. Now, these are things that we knew were going on before, uh, that there was a collusion with terrorist organization and with terrorist bodies, uh, especially Hamas in the Gaza Strip, but nothing had really been proven the way it's been proven today. And the evidence that's coming out uh, as, a, as a byproduct of the IDF being on the ground and being able to provide actual evidence themselves is really, I think, what's making the difference this time when it comes to uh, media that's uh, impartial, like Al Jazeera, of course, which is Qatari state-funded propaganda, essentially. And I remember just about three months ago, a little bit more than three months ago, there was evidence showing that the Al Jazeera journalists on the ground were feeding Israeli troop locations directly back to Hamas. And at the time, Israel had considered pulling the uh, ability for them to broadcast and to operate in Israel. And Netanyahu said this was not the time to do it because Qatar was involved in the hostage negotiations and he didn't want to scupper any deal there. But is the same thing going to happen now? Is Israel still too reliant on Qatar to actually stop their propaganda from operating here? Well, you know, I can't say from the inside what's actually happening on the ground. I'm not a representative of the government. Of course, there are concerns when it comes to any kind of hostage negotiation. We do have an ultimate goal here of getting those innocent people back home, and that should be the priority. However, at the same time, the fact that, that Netanyahu's response to dealing with the uh, proper conduct of Al Jazeera as a media agency because of Qatar, that statement alone tells you everything you need to know about Qatar. This is not impartial media. It is a propaganda channel. It has been extremely instrumental in the advancement of radical Islamist ideology. This is a channel who celebrated a Samir Kuntar, a Hezbollah terrorist who murdered an innocent Israeli child with the butt of his rifle. They threw him a birthday party on air. This is the channel that we're talking about. And one thing that's very interesting about Al Jazeera is that a lot of their journalism is actually quite good on every other issue. But when it comes to the Middle East and it comes to Israel, it's almost as if they've devised an, an entire plan to seem credible, credible on other issues. And yet when it comes to extremism and terrorism, they're whitewashing it. They're making excuses for it. And in some cases, they're actively aiding terrorist organizations like Hamas with the example that you mentioned. It's not the first time. We also know that from day one, Al Jazeera has been at the forefront of fueling misinformation, or in their case, I believe, disinformation intentionally about what's happening on the ground. And a great example of that is the uh, attack on the hospital in the Gaza Strip, which Israel was mistakenly blamed for at the beginning. It was actually an Islamic Jihad rocket that was fired that hit a hospital inside of the Gaza Strip. And yet within minutes, Al Jazeera was at the scene reporting on what happened and falsely claiming that at least 500 people had been killed. Now you tell me, how does it make sense that 500 casualties could be counted in less than 15 minutes, which is what Al Jazeera's timeline was of reporting this incident? So it just doesn't add up. And we see this happen time and time again with Al Jazeera, and it's overdue. It's overdue. We should not be allowed allowing agencies that are aiding terrorism to be using uh, the, the privileges that come with being a member of the press in the state of Israel. It's, it's inexcusable. In the past, Al Jazeera has hid behind those privileges, saying, well, it's their sources, and they need to rely on their sources, and every other distraction they could throw up as flack. But this time, we're seeing direct evidence of this collusion, of this coordination, and this participation in terror activities. This isn't just a matter of broadcast licensing under Israeli law. These are prescribed terror organizations on the international scene. Why does this not invite international sanction against Qatar and Al Jazeera? 
Well, I think that that's a great question, um, and, and we need to be speaking with other world leaders about this issue as well. I don't think that Al Jazeera is just a, a problem for the state of Israel. Al Jazeera is a problem, uh, you know, I believe they're a problem because I am a journalist. I believe it's a problem because they are violating any uh, a principle of journalism. I mean, this is complete journalistic malpractice. There's no ethics when it comes to what Al Jazeera is doing and has done. Uh, there is some pressure that is starting to mount. We have have seen some pushback in the United States, for example, uh, for uh, requiring Al Jazeera to register under FARA, the Foreign Agent Registration Act in the United States. Uh, they've also used Al Jazeera Plus, which is sort of their Western version on many social justice issues uh, that's been quite successful, especially through social media. And now we start to see that U.S. lawmakers are having these conversations. Well, who is really behind Al Jazeera? And what is actually the agenda here? The same way that they have poured billions of dollars into American universities. We see the byproduct of that today as well, anti-Semitism. This is a huge component of the message of the uh, nation branding even that Qatar is putting forward. And this anti-Semitism and, and anti-Zionism, or, or really, you know, they're, they're masquerading as anti-Zionism on the issue of Israel, is contributing to attacks on Jewish people on the ground in the United States. And of course, this is an issue in Europe as well. And that is because words have consequences. And when they are spreading things that are, that are intentional, disinformation about issues like the hospital bombing, for example. A member of Congress tweeted this story before it came out, and it went to millions and millions of people. This is what people think happened because of Al Jazeera and its falls. And the thing is that Al Jazeera knows that, and they're not being held accountable, and it's past due. Someone needs to do something, not just in the state of Israel, in Europe, in the United States, and in every country where Al Jazeera broadcasts. You mentioned, and it's a very good point to bring up, the billions of dollars that Qatar has funneled into American universities, the propaganda networks they've set up with AJ Plus over TikTok and other forms of social media to spread these short clips that are, as you pointed out yourself, full of direct intentional misinformation. Is this a matter of too little and too late to respond if they had decades to get the head start? I don't think it's too late to respond. Obviously, it would have been better if multiple nations had dealt with this issue before and really held them accountable, because very similar to the issue of UNRWA, it's not new. These are things we've been writing about, we've been speaking about, we've been raising the alarm about for many years. It, it's not new what Al Jazeera is doing. The example I gave you of Samir Kuntar, that happened almost a decade ago. So why is something only being done now? I mean, that's a great question. I think people push things off that are difficult for as long as they can, especially at the diplomatic and state level. And of course, it sounds bad. You don't want to be uh, persecuting or, or censoring journalists. The problem here is that they're not journalists when it comes to this issue. And I think it's very, very important that we make that distinction. And this war is actually a great example and a great starting point for those conversations internationally because of what I said, because we have seen this from Al Jazeera. We've seen this from BBC, from New York Times, from AP and Reuters who were working with those uh, photojournalists. What are the ethics of, of reporters, of stringers who are on the ground dealing with terrorist organizations. And interestingly, we never really had uh, problems at this level of people being active members of terrorist organizations like we do in this case. You know, Fox News, for example, hasn't really had this problem, and yet we've seen some other networks that can't seem to find journalists who are unaffiliated with Hamas. That, that alone also speaks to the situation in the Gaza Strip and how uh, influential and pervasive this terrorist ideology and involvement of Hamas has been at every single level. Uh, ultimately, and unfortunately in a way, because I wish it wasn't the case, it proves that everything, just about everything that Israel has said about the Gaza Strip, about the, 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 the population in the Gaza Strip, the schools in the Gaza Strip, the UN agencies in the Gaza Strip, the NGOs, and yes, unfortunately, as much as I hate to say it as a journalist myself, the media in the Gaza Strip is a massive problem and we cannot be silent about the collusion between terrorist organizations and so-called journalists on the ground. It is unacceptable and every single journalist and media agency as well as world leaders should be speaking out against it. Absolutely, Emily, thank you so much for showing us the scope of the problem as people in the information and journalism business. We both know the expression, the lie can make it halfway around the world before the truth can even get its boots on. Absolutely, thank you.